this week we're looking at the book of Lamentations and Daniel. Uh, the lecture will be a little bit shorter this week. So I, I know that you probably don't at all object to that. Um, so we're deal just dealing with two books. Then moving forward, we'll deal with uh, the 12 minor prophets moving toward the end of the semester. But right now we'll deal with uh, Lamentations. We'll also deal with Daniel. Now, Lamentations, uh, we're looking at a book that is usually attributed to Jeremiah. So you have the book of Lamentations and Jeremiah usually together, you know, we're thinking these two are connected to one another because they're written by the same individual. But as far as the content of the book itself is concerned, you have these five songs. Song one deals with Jerusalem is personified as a weeping widow. So there's personification going on there. And, and Jerusalem is weeping. She's a widow. And in Psalm 2, God comes as a warrior against Jerusalem. Of course, there's the judgment oracles that you have dealt with with uh, and the other prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah has those uh, woes and oracles against the nations. Well, there's also oracles against Jerusalem. Now, God is coming as a warrior against Jerusalem in this song. In the third song, Yahweh, God, is the one who afflicts, but he will heal his people. So you have the healing and the afflicting being done by God in this case. Uh, song four, you have two voices reflecting on the utter destruction of the city. And then song five, a prayer of Yahweh's restoration. It's the book of Lamentations. Now, when we deal with authorship and date, on the book of Lamentations, often is it is associated, yes, with Jeremiah's lament over Jerusalem's destruction by the Babylonians. This is 586 B.C. Uh, when Jerusalem finally falls. Uh, although it's often associated with Jeremiah, the authorship is uncertain, but the book can be dated close to the fall of Jerusalem. So uh, I have no problem saying Jeremiah uh, wrote the book, um, but always there's going to be a scholarly debate as to whether or not this actually took place or not, actually whether or not he wrote the book. So just be aware of that. So Lamentations uh, is pretty straightforward, not a whole lot going on as far as the book is concerned. Uh, genre, you have these outlines and chapters one uh, through five, and these are uh, five part acrostic poems uh, similar to uh, other civilizations and their use of lament, uh, Sumerian or Akkadian texts as far as city lament is concerned. And here's the correlations. Uh, you have acrostics. You have a 22-line acrostic, two 22-line acrostics, a 66-line acrostic, 22-line acrostic, and then a 22-line acrostic. Funeral dirges, individual lament, and then communal laments. So let's talk about Daniel. Daniel being probably the most prophetic of the prophets. And so when you think about prophecy and uh, apocalyptic prophecy, this is the major prophet that you will often cite and go to. So the content of the book, major theme, 
Uh, in spite of present difficulties, God is in control and he will have the victory. You see that narrative in the first six chapters. Uh, Daniel 1 through 6 provides a court narrative of Daniel and his friends. Faithfulness. You have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You have those three in the fiery furnace. Uh, and one like unto the Son of Man. And then you have this ap- uh, apocalyptic vision in Daniel 7 through 12. You're provided with an apocalyptic vision of God's faithfulness to his people amidst their oppression from the Gentiles. Uh, so those who are in captivity, being oppressed, and though uh, they are oppressed, ultimately God is going to have ultimate victory. And here's a little bit of uh, art depicting some of these situations. Uh, Daniel lines then Daniel before uh, the king. Uh, you see that there, kind of depicted in uh, art of that day and today. Uh, and then also artistic depictions dealing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, one like unto the Son of Man. And again, uh, there is Daniel praying. And we know he, he prays even though he's told not to, uh, but he still makes that stand. Uh, off the ship and date, many scholars and some evangelical ones consider Daniel as written in the 2nd century B.C., after the abomination of and of desolation by um, Aphinas the fourth, um, so there are some scholars who think these things have already taken place. These are not future, but these are past, and they place it as having been written in the second century, uh, where Daniel's prophecy actually prophesies or, or, or were they prophecies actually prophecies or reflections on events that have already passed? That's the question. Um, most evangelicals will say that many of the apocalyptic aspects of Daniel's prophecy are yet to come. Uh, but not all would say that. Okay, you just need to know that. And those who advocate for a 6th century B.C. composition would argue that the prophecies are authentic and describe actual future events. That's where most people will fall. Daniel eleven forty through 45 would then refer to some yet future event. And so Daniel 11... 40 through 45, which is speaking of the northern kingdoms or northern king's conquest. At the time of the end of the king of the south shall attack him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen and with many ships and they shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through them. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape from the hand, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasure of gold and silver and over the precious things of Egypt. Also, the Libyans and Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with a great fury to destroy and annihilate them. And he shall plant his tent the tent of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet 
he shall come to his end and no one will help him. This is that abomination, abomin- ugh, abomination of desolation. Um, and that future prophecy that we would consider. And as far as genre, we have Daniel divided mainly into two portions, uh, one through six and seven through 12, with court tales and apocalyptic visions. And then they make up a one truly apocalyptic book in the Old Testament, meaning. Daniel is the book mainly where apocalyptic literature is found in the Old Testament. Now, we would say apocalyptic literature is mainly, as far as the New Testament is concerned, is in the book of the Revelation. So that's why you often hear people say, well, what book in the Old Testament is most like that of the book of Revelation, and they'll say it's Daniel, and it's for that reason, uh, because they're written in apocalyptic, uh, from a apocalyptic genre situation. Okay, uh, but you also there is uh, it is written in Hebrew and Aramaic, um, so there's debate about that. Um, is this a different person who's come up or are they writing to a different group, um, writing in two languages? That's not normal. Usually a document is written in one language throughout. Then you have the apocalyptic genre, which includes uh, visions of far future events, a meditation or angelic revelation, and then sensual are, are unusual imagery like uh, that one uh, who is uh, is the the statue and all the things that go on around that all the things that go on around uh, the imagery used and then it is within a setting of oppression that these things are being written uh, they're being persecuted they're being tempted and they're looking to god so uh usually that that is where you find apocalyptic genre and its roots Uh, like i said this was a short lecture this week Uh, if you have any questions please let me know don't hesitate to contact me as you have and um, thank you for listening